Hey friends, over 60% of you are listening to me right now on an Apple product. iPhone, iPad, iTunes. I need your help. The truth is, Apple will make this podcast more discoverable to new listeners the more reviews it has. So I'm here asking you to take a moment and leave a review. If you've gained any value from this podcast, the greatest thing you can do for it, besides spreading the word and telling friends, is leaving a review. It's real simple. If you're on your phone, head over to my podcast page within the Apple Podcast app and leave a review. Or, if you're on a computer, you can head over to my podcast page within the iTunes app. That's it. That's all I ask. And if you have other podcasts that you love, do them a favor and do the same for them. It'll make their day. Now let's get this podcast started already. Welcome to the Gary Cantrell Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Always a blast to have you guys here. Thank you so much for your support of the program. And keep spreading the word. Keep telling them friends. Share it out on your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you got. Because the best way to support this show is to spread the word. I want to help as many people as I can with my experiences that may offer up some advice uh, for potentially to help you or people you know who are on weight loss journeys and, and just life in general. I mean, let's not just make it only weight loss. It's I think a lot of the stuff that, that's talked about on this podcast could be general life stuff, like the four pillars I talk about. I think all that's general life, you know, just in life, you practice those things and you can't lose. So today I figured I would share a story about, um, you know, one of the things that I get asked about frequently is, you know, hey, Gary, I see you at amusement parks so often, you know, um, man, it seems like every other weekend you're at a theme park riding roller coasters. What is that all about? And wouldn't you know it, there is a weight loss based story around that. Um, And so I figured I'd come on today and and talk about that and, um, you know, see if uh, anybody else has gone through something similar or, uh, you know, something to that degree. So let's talk about it. Um, For me, I go back to the first roller coaster I ever got on was 1994. It was called The Hurler. It was based off the movie Wayne's World. Uh, it's King's Dominion here in Virginia. It used to be owned by Paramount, uh, you know, the movie company. They had a subdivision called Paramount Parks. And so it was called Paramount's King's Dominion. The ride was the hurdler based off Wayne's World. And that was the first roller coaster I ever got on. And I was kind of, you know, a little nervous, a little scared, but I got on it. Now, as the years would progress, I started riding roller coasters more and more. And... It wasn't until 2010 that it all stopped. And that was because in 2010, I really started to get larger. Um, And I ran into a problem. So I get to King's Dominion, and I don't remember what day this was. I just know it was in 2010 sometime. And the very first ride I go for is a ride called the Flight of Fear. When Paramount owned the park, they no longer own the park. It's now owned by Cedar Fair. But when they owned the park, it was uh, called the Outer Limits Flight of Fear for that. Uh, I guess Outer Limits was a TV show. And I go on this ride and I go to sit down and they go to strap me in. And they said um, they called somebody over. And I'm, I'm kind of just, you know, clueless to the whole thing at this point. They call somebody over and they're trying to push the harness down to a point of where it could not be locked. They were unable to lock the harness. And so they said, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to ride. And I remember that there was, I guess, one person who was upset because it was holding up the ride And then I just remember out of the corner of my eye, and it wasn't anything loud, but I just remember that there were people that were looking in my direction, and I saw laughter, and and I was just, it was very, very upsetting and and kind of traumatizing to a degree. You see, back then, it wasn't quite like I am now, where, you know, now I just kind of, I'm so comfortable that no matter what people say, like, I just don't care, like... 
you know, if I'm out in public vlogging, it doesn't bother me. I mean, you guys that follow me on Instagram, you know, I'm out doing stories all the time and I don't care. Like, I don't care what other people think. But back then it was something that I wasn't used to uh, necessarily, or at least if it was happening, I never saw it. Because the last time that I actually really got like made fun of was in high school, which, you know, we're talking about from 2000 is when I graduated, uh, 2010 is when this happened. So you're talking like 10 years and in 10 years, I had never really dealt with, you know, being necessarily made fun of for my weight. Um, it's not to say I was never made fun of in 10 years. People did make fun of me for other things, but you know, when it came to the weight and I knew it too, look, I, I packed on some pounds and I wasn't at my heaviest in 2010. It didn't get worse until later, but at that point was when I started, I, I, I was, I'm pretty sure I was well over 250 at that point. Um, and that's when the trouble really started for me, but it was, it was just something I was not used to, you know, seeing somebody laugh and, it really upset me. And and for those that don't know, I didn't go back to King's Dominion or any theme park uh, for that matter until 2017. Seven years that I went without going to a theme park. And there is a possibility that there are other rides and other parks that I could have easily fit on because not all roller coasters are created equal. Some of them help. I mean, look, I'm I'm in the upper 270s right now, but because my my upper half is still, you know, kind of large, you know, there are some rides that can be an issue, but most coasters have certain rows that accommodate for that. And we can get into that, but you know, it wasn't until 2017 that I I went back and and started riding roller coasters again because that really screwed you up. I mean, how many of you out there listening virtually raise your hand? How many of you listening have ever had a moment in time where you had something like that, that was mentally traumatic to you to a point of where you just said to yourself, okay, never again. I'm not doing this ever again. I guarantee you everyone that's listening that's happened to you at least once. I know that I'm not the only one here. And then 2017 came and I had my, as I call it, the awakening and life changed forever on January 3rd, 2017. That's when I started my weight loss journey officially. Um, the one that counted, I, I, I don't really count the old ones cause they were so few and far between and they lasted no longer than a week. It's not like I had one where I went like six months and then I screwed up and said, oh, I'm restarting or I'm starting over. It was never that. These were every time I previously tried to lose weight, it was always, you know, it lasted two weeks and then I just quit. Um, so January 3rd, 2017, that's when it stuck. And so as, as it was getting warmer, I said, you know, I wonder if I can do coasters again. Like, I wonder, is that possible? And I remember there was this ride, the Intimidator, that was, you know, open in, in 2010 that I had ridden at one point. Because I went twice that year. Um, the second time is where the Outer Limits Flight of Fear thing happened. But there was one point where I just stopped in there for like an hour to ride the new Intimidator ride. And I remember those seats being very comfortable. And I said, you know what? I bet I bet I could probably do that. So last, this would have been late March, early April, I decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm, I'm going to go down to King's Dominion and I'm going to see if I can get on the rides. And I said, you know what? Because I'm practicing patience, consistency, hard work, and self-love... I'm, and most importantly on that part, patience, I'm going to try one ride at a time. So I said to my, I set a goal to myself, I'm going to go down to King's Dominion and I'm going to make it a goal to get on one ride. So I set a goal that I knew was achievable. And this is so important. I've talked about this before, you know, setting a goal that you know can be achieved. And so I went down there and I got on the Intimidator and 
it was close. You know, the seatbelt was very, very close, you know, because I was pretty, you know, at that point I was still just over 300. I think, let's see. I probably, it's probably around 320 there. I think I'd already lost like 50 pounds in like four months. It's crazy to think. Um, but I, I, I had it about 323, 30, somewhere in there. And I got on the ride and it was close, but I fit. And I proceeded to get back on that ride over and over and over again. That first time I think I rode it like 10 times. And then I said, all right, I'm going to leave now. And I left because I didn't want to go to another ride and have a problem getting on. Little would I know that there are other rides that I probably could have fit on. But mentally, because mental is is, is very important, you got to be mentally strong. Mentally, I said, you know what? I got to be patient about this. I got to take the right mindset. And so I waited. And then I came back a few weeks later after I, you know, continued to follow my goals and work hard because hard work always wins. I went back. I rode the Intimidator. It was awesome. The seat belt was a little bit easier, a little bit. I mean, it still wasn't great, but it was a little bit better. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to try another one. Let's try Dominator. <laughs> Dominator is up by the front of the park. So I went up there and um, I saw that in rows four and five, they had a larger seat. But I wanted to just see, could I get in the regular seat? So I tried that first and that unfortunately was not going to happen. But they have... They have these larger seats, which actually to this day I still have to use just because my frame is still, you know, it's still very wide and, and comes out a little bit. Um, I think it's mainly the shoulders, though. The, the belly is not so much of a problem as it used to be, but we're getting there. Um, but in these uh, larger seat rows, excuse me, basically what they do is they have a second seat belt. So instead of the shoulder thing coming down and there's one in the middle, there's two on the side, which I wish they had this on every ride, quite frankly. Um, but they had this larger row and I got on that. No problem. And again, it was so awesome. I think I didn't get back down there for like another month. Pretty sure. And once I had finally hit, this would have been right around 300, perhaps somewhere in there. I felt kind of gutsy. I'm like, all right, let's try. Um, let's try the flight of fear again. First time in seven years. I got on it. And they had to ask somebody to come over again. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Other guy comes over, puts his foot down on the bar, and they get the belt to snap. Or close, rather. Click, snap, whatever. You know what I mean. And I'm riding it. Now, this was not the most comfortable because it was very tight. And I know there's still work to go there. But mentally, for me, it was a win because I was able to get on that ride again. And I think there was like one other time that I rode it and I had no problem getting on it. But that was the whole thing. It was like, can I get back to that ride? And I did. No problem. Go to a couple of the wooden coasters and those are a little more lenient. No problem. It hurts a little more because where the lap bar is, it kind of just jabs your, your tummy and that's not very comfortable for me. But still, I made it work. Okay. Um... And then we have another one, unfortunately, this season it's closed. It's, it's down. They're waiting on a part, I think, is what I heard. But the volcano, which is like a blast coaster, you know, you go around a corner and it just launches you and you come out of the top of a mountain. <laughs> awesome, awesome roller coaster. I got on that one with no problem. And I'm just like, this is so freaking cool. It was a little tight, but I fit. And so I know that I've made the right progress to where I could go back to this park without a problem and ride these rides. And it just, that, it pumps me up. And then, you know, for another added mental boost, 
Uh, this summer I came back, you know, rode all the rides, no problem. And then uh, one of my best friends took me to Bush Gardens in Williamsburg. And I was able to get on each and every roller coaster there. And I got to tell you guys, it was it was just so awesome. You know, it was no troubles, set, fit right on it, no problem. Every ride. And, and so it's become kind of a connection to me because last summer I spent all summer trying to fit on these rides. Now it's a thing where I really embrace it. So when people ask me, hey, Gary, why – why do you go to theme parks so much? Why are you on theme parks so often? And the answer is so simple. It's because I'm finally able to do it again. You know, it's something I'm finally able to do. I like the thrill. And so when you find something, keep <sighs> there. When you find something that you like so much, you just go with it and you do it in repetition, just like something you're good at with a workout. You do it in repetition. Um, I went up to Six Flags in New Jersey. There was a ride there called the King Daka, which goes zero to 128 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds. And you go straight up a 450 foot lift hill. Okay. Um, or not a lift hill. You're not lifted. You're blasted off up this hill and it's scary, man. That's a scary ride. But I've been seeing that thing on TV for like the last 10 or 15 years. And I'm like, I have to ride this ride. And so I went up to New Jersey and I rode it, but not just that. I went on each and every roller coaster in that park without a problem, without a problem. It was not a problem. You know, were there some that had the big boy seats like in row four or five? Yep went on those no problem at all it was absolutely no problem and that's what I love that's why I keep going back to these parks now I did have one bad experience and that was at my local Six Flags they have a ride called Superman and there was an issue getting on that ride but I would argue that it wasn't all me because um Number one, those seats are notoriously tight. I have friends who are much lighter than I am, uh, who have far less of a tummy than I have, and even they have trouble getting on that ride. So it's not necessarily just me. That ride is a little tight. And at that ride, for whatever reason, every time I went over there, it's like these young kids that are that are working on those rides and they just don't have the strength to push the lap bar down tighter, if you know what I mean. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, you know, it's like they don't really have, they don't really put in the effort to try to push it in uh, tighter. Whereas if they got some kind of strong person uh, who's had to push it in a little tighter, they do it easily, no problem. Um, and so I was not able to get on that ride. And I'm okay with that. I I don't view that as a loss. I view that as a lack of effort from the attendants because literally if they just pushed it down a little bit tighter, it wouldn't have been a problem um, because they have like a sensor on these things and you just simply have to push it. It has to be able to reach down far enough to, to go. And I still had room like, you know, it is tight, but it was a point of where if they just pushed it a little bit harder, it wouldn't have really hurt me all that much. Like I would have been okay with it, but... Again, not a loss, um, you know, because there are so many other roller coasters I can get on. And by the way, I'm still working on this thing. It's not even over yet. So that's that's the other part about it, too. It's like in another year or two, I, this won't even be a thing. I probably won't even have to ride the big boy seats. But I stay motivated for that reason. If you see me posting a lot from theme parks, it's for that reason. It's because, plain and simple, this has been a goal of mine for so many years, and I'm finally able to achieve it. So let's turn the tables on you, the listeners of the Gary Cantrell podcast. Let me poll you and ask you all about your experiences, whether it be with roller coasters or what, what are other things that you have tried in the past to get on or things you've tried to do that you just simply couldn't do because of your size. Is it something to where you've now got into a place where you could do it? I'd love to hear about it. Share your story with me. Hit, sit, hit me up. Send me a DM on Instagram or you can, I mean, you could do whatever you want. Uh, hit me up, but, but get a hold of me and let's talk about it. I'd love to hear from you guys on your thoughts on uh, different experiences. But I can tell you that this was an awesome 
awesome experience getting to go to these theme parks. And actually, as of press of time, I have plans to go back to all these parks again and again and again because I have season passes to each and every one of these parks. And so I go to all of them, which is which is so cool. I mean, it's just so cool to be able to go to these things over and over and over again. It never gets old to me because I know that I can just keep going and getting on all these rides and, and, and having that thrill too, you know, having the thrill of being able to get on these rides and experience that thrill because here's the thing too. It's like, I've come, I've come all this way with my weight loss, right? And so in the past year, it's made me want to take on more, uh, thrills, uh, you know, and do stuff that's out of my comfort zone. Like, uh, the guys from, What's that YouTube channel? Yes Theory. I, I actually did a YouTube video about him. If you go on my YouTube channel or my IGTV, I did. I, it's the same video. I put it on both. Um, if you check that out, I did a video about this channel called Yes Theory, and they talk about seeking discomfort. And I, I really resonate. It really resonated with me about seeking discomfort because. You know, in this past year, like I said, I've been wanting to take on more thrills and get as, as I've become more comfortable in the skin that I'm in, I also, you know, want to do new thrills to kind of be in that level of discomfort. And when I saw those videos that those guys were doing, those guys were doing, which include things like asking random Uber drivers to go skydiving on the spot or asking strangers to go to breakfast or, um, just really interesting, weird videos, but they were, they're just so much fun. And the, and the, the general point is what really means something. And that is, you know, seeking that discomfort, doing things that are out of your comfort zone to explore and experience more things that you wouldn't normally do. And so as I've lost this weight, it's built a ton of confidence. It's really become something where, My confidence level is boosted and I've really just, you know, experienced so much more life as I've lost this weight. It's really changed my life for the better. And that's ultimately what this is all about, you know, on the road to a better life. If you talk to me two years ago, the guy two years ago, you know, he was a nice guy. You probably could have had a few beers with him. He would have ate the hell out of some good food and I still eat some good food. I just eat less of it. But that guy was, was fun to be with. But this guy right now that I am even, even better. I'm telling you, this is the best version of my life so far and I'm still writing it. It's not even done. So I can't imagine what it's going to look like in a couple more years. I'm really excited and I want to encourage all of you out there to, Find that better version of you. Most of you are probably already figuring that out. But for those of you who haven't thought of it in that way, and I hope that you do consider thinking of it in that way, you know, finding that best version of you and living your life to the fullest, whether that's going on roller coasters or jumping out of a plane like I hope to do one day, um, you know, any kind of thrill, whatever you're looking to do, whatever makes you happy, that's what you should do. I see it on the memes all the time, but it's relevant to bring up here. Like every, all these people that are, that are just living, they're just existing, that they're not living their life to the fullest. I don't want to be that guy. I don't just want to clock in and clock out and go home. I want to live life to the fullest. I got up this morning at seven 30 this morning on a weekend because I was so fired up to get out of the house and go do something. And I went to a theme park. I went to King's Dominion and I got on some rides. I seek discomfort and I approached a complete stranger that I never met and I talked to him. There was a guy who's on a King's Dominion uh, group on Facebook. He posts on there all the time and I've never met him. We've uh, liked each other's posts on there. And I just said out of the blue, hey, dude, I see you're here. Where you at, man? I'd love to say hello. And he told me where he was at. And I went over there and I said hello. Old me would have never done that. Are you kidding me? 
old me would have kept to himself. And don't get me wrong, there is still the aspect of me that likes to keep to himself at times. I'm not going to pretend like I don't. But the new me is like, hey, let me hit this complete stranger up on Facebook and ask him where he's at and let's let's meet up. And so we talked for like 15 minutes. It was it was awesome. So I would encourage you to do that. You know, check it out. See if you know, see if you can get out of your comfort zone. That's all. And then also when you're done with that, when you've tried something, swipe up and tell me about it. And even better yet, go share it on your Instagram or your Facebook or your Twitter or whatever you have. This is something else. I'll probably do a longer podcast about this, but this is something else that I really want to encourage people. Share your story. A lot of you are already doing it, but there are some that, you know, when it comes to the bad stuff, they start apologizing. They feel embarrassed. They feel nervous, right? They don't want people to know that they failed. Or they want people to know because they want to tell them about how they're starting over, how they're restarting. Don't do that. I hope the people out there listening realize that there are so many people that follow you on Instagram, especially if you're on weight loss. They're probably going through that stuff. They probably experienced that or they're probably thinking about it or they probably haven't even shared it because they're nervous too. But guess what? If you share it, you will make them feel comfortable. You will show them that it's okay to talk about these things. We can't just celebrate our victories online. We got to show the good and the bad. And don't apologize for it. Just say, hey, look. This is what happened. And this is what I'm going to do about it. And that's it. There are going to be so many people that can identify with that. You don't have to apologize to these people. They're not the random strangers that are poking fun at you and pointing at you like people were doing at me at King's Dominion when I had to be kicked off that damn ride. These are people, for the most part, who are going through the same stuff. And when you share real life stuff, People resonate with it. They get it. They understand it. So share that. Be real. Be authentic. Don't be afraid to post the bad stuff. Share share it. Put it out there. Because you never know who's watching. You never know who's listening. And you never know whose day you're going to make when you share something And they say, oh, wow, I've been going through something similar. The fact that you shared this makes me know that I'm not alone and that I can get through this, that there is a clear path to getting out of this, to getting around it, to getting working through it. You have a power right now that you don't even know you have. So what are you going to do with that power? You're going to sit on it because you're afraid that somebody is going to look at you and laugh? Screw that, man or lady. Go out and share it. Make someone's day because you just showed them they weren't alone. All right. I think you guys get my point by now. (laughs) But seriously, don't be afraid to share help others, give value. I talk about this all the time. I'll close with this. Give value to others. Show them what you go through because you're going to help people and you don't even realize it. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid. The chances are if you're already sharing stuff on Instagram, you're not all that uncomfortable with it. I think people just think that they're embarrassed Or that they will be embarrassed and that they'll be judged. But you're already sharing a lot anyway. So just share it all. Be real. I mean, don't share it all. Don't share it like, hey, I just went and took a poop or something. But you you guys know what I mean. (laughs) All right? 
Seek discomfort. I'm going to borrow that from Yes Theory and go follow them on YouTube. They don't need my plug. They have 2 million freaking followers. I said freaking. They have 2 million freaking followers on YouTube, okay? They don't need my plug. But go follow them. And I challenge everyone out there to go out and seek discomfort this weekend, this week. Go out and crush your goals. And then hit them up. Tag me in it. Tell them I sent you. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for listening. By the way, before we go, hardworkalwayswins.com. It's more than just a clothing line. It is my mantra. I speak it. I wear it. I live it. We got some brand new dope products in the store, brand new phone cases. Got uh, the hoodies, the tank tops. Summer's winding down, folks. Get them tank tops now. Hoodies, back to school. Fall is right around the corner. Maybe you want a sweet new hoodie. We got the T-shirts. We're going to be doing some long sleeve stuff as well, sweaters. Um, We're rolling it all out, folks. So get on board now and use the code Gary's Podcast to save 10% off your very first order. I'm hooking you up. So go get that code and uh, get you some sweet swag for the end of summer slash beginning of fall. Be prepared. Look dope while you do it. And then when you're done with that, DM me on Instagram and we'll share it out to the hard work squad. And we'll show everybody what you're all about. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll be back next week with another show. Thank you.